Hi, Mrs. Brown. Hi. Hi, I'm Janelle. I'm one of the um, lactation consultants, and I wanted to come and visit with you a little bit because I understand you're like wanting to breastfeed. Yes. During my visit to Mrs. Brown, I will discuss with her how to get her baby to latch on correctly. I will also talk with her about four positions that are very common for breastfeeding and help her to find out which one will work the best for her. I will also talk with her about the size of a newborn stomach and help her to understand how much milk a baby actually needs from the very first day. I will also discuss with her some breast shells and nipple shield that can be used to help women that have nipples that are flat or inverted. I will also try to answer her questions and get her to feel comfortable as she begins breastfeeding. Um, and tell me, is there anything about breastfeeding you know or anything that you're concerned about initially? I heard it was the best thing for the baby oh, and could help me lose weight too. <laughs> absolutely, you're absolutely right. And um, a lot of women choose to breastfeed for a lot of reasons and it is a commitment and there's a lot of things sometimes that we have to do to help you get started. But once you learn it and get comfortable with it, it really is the best way to feed your baby. And so there's a lot of benefits to that. So we're excited for you. Well, one of the things I first wanna do, um, the first and most important step to helping you get started breastfeeding is positioning and you probably have seen women breastfeed in a variety of ways one of the ways that um, I like to introduce um, just to show moms initially is that you can also breastfeed um, using the football hold the baby would kind of go right underneath your arm and then the baby would be able to get a hold of your breast very easily that way. And it's very comfortable because it allows you to be able to do other things as well. It really works good also for moms that have had a C-section. And so many times we encourage moms to do that because it doesn't put pressure on their incision. So that's one way. Another way is sideline, which is just like it says, you would be lying on your side in the bed and the baby would be next to you and you would be able to feed it. This is very popular for nighttime feedings. Mm -hmm. It also takes the pressure off the incision again if moms have had a C-section, but it also works for all kinds of moms, vaginal deliveries as well. The other one that you've probably heard about is the cradle, or you've seen women feeding at restaurants or somewhere. Sometimes they used to call that the park bench hold, <laughs> and all that that meant is it looked like mom was very comfortable feeding her baby like this, and so many times you see that. It's very comfortable for mom. It helps the baby to get a hold of the nipple um, very easily, and it also takes... Um, and just kind of helps them give mom kind of a free hand as well. So you can do that. The other one you can do is cross cradle, which sometimes women will use as well. But it, with a cross cradle, you're actually putting the baby across the abdomen a little bit more and you're holding the baby's head a little bit easier so this hand's free and this head you can kind of move, this hand helps you to move the head to where it can grasp the nipple real well. So those are four different types of positions. There's no wrong or right way to position a baby for breastfeeding, but I just wanted to show you some of the more common ones. Now that we've discussed positioning, I want to also talk to you about helping the baby to latch onto the breast, which is probably one of the things you've heard sometimes women have trouble getting the baby to actually grasp on. Um, and so I'll sh use my little model over here to kind of help you look at that. One of the first things you really want to do is keep the baby at the level of you. You don't ever want to droop down to try to get the baby to latch onto the breast. Some other ways that you can do that is you can use a bath blanket like this or a blanket you have at home or you could use like a pillow and just put it underneath and it's a little bit harder for me to show you standing up but if you were laying down or sitting up like you are that would make it easier that's going to be really important there's also some of the breastfeeding pillows out there that you might have gotten for a shower gift or seen and so those work really well too but the main thing is to keep the baby up and positioned um, at your level another important technique when you're getting the baby latch to latch on is to keep the baby's nose opposite the nipple and what this does is two things. It puts the baby tummy to tummy, which is really important. It also puts the baby's nose opposite your nipple. So what happens then is when the baby wants to latch onto the breast, it's able to go up top of the breast, which forces that nipple to go to the roof of the mouth and helps the baby to be able to suck or propel that milk out in efficient manner. And so that really helps to get that nice closed system going so the baby's able to do that. So again, it would be like this and the baby's able to do that. And so that's another trick that might help you as well. Do you have any more questions for me? I don't think so, thank you. All right, you're welcome. I'm gonna go ahead and leave um, this guide to breastfeeding. It gives you some um, examples of how to breastfeed and kind of just reviews everything I discussed with you. And inside is some contact information. So should you need to call us for any other questions or concerns, we're available and it gives you the number to do so. Thank you so There much. you go. Have a good day and congratulations. Thanks, you too.
This concludes our pregnancy scenario, beginning with preconception through postpartum. We hope this scenario has helped you to understand the major concepts of the pregnancy and delivery experience. We illustrated the care for a healthy individual and a positive pregnancy and delivery outcome. However, pregnancy and labor and delivery may sometimes present with major nursing challenges and poor maternal fetal outcomes. Negative physiological and psychological consequences need to be considered as you rotate through this clinical specialty. The didactic learning portion of this rotation will fill in the gaps of knowledge that this film intentionally left out. We hope you have a great learning experience.